Assalamualaikum yous, welcome to the chapter number 8 of class 12th English book that is the letter A by Christy Brown. If I ask people with which alphabet, with which letter they begin their academic careers, I think 95% of people are surely going to say that they begin their academic careers with the letter A. If I ask you with which letter you begin writing, I'm sure most of you are also going to say that you begin writing in the same letter. You wrote letter A when a pen was handed over to you. Most of us begin our academic careers with the same letter, the letter A. In the modern era, you know, in the age of globalization, English has become more important. It has become a link language of the world. Our medium of education is English. Our medium of instruction is English. That's why we all begin our academic careers with the same language and with the same alphabet, the letter A. Now how come, how did, why did, in which circumstances we, a person writes letter A? A person is not expected to remember that. Because usually a person starts writing, reading at an early age, at a tender age. Now how come Christy Brown write an autobiographical sketch on this incident that how, why and in which circumstances he wrote letter A for the first time in life? This is interesting. You know, Christy Brown was not a normal human being. He was suffering from a disease called cerebral Palsy. Cerebral palsy is a neuromuscular disorder. It's a disease in which a person's nervous system and muscular system are not working in a coordinated way. You know, every system in animals or in human beings works in coordination with the nervous system. Nervous system includes brain, spinal cord, nerves, nerve cells, etc. Every system in human beings works in coordination with the nervous system. But in this disease, in cerebral palsy, a person's muscular system and nervous system are not working in a coordination. Now how this disease is caused? This disease is caused by injury to infant's brain during early infancy or during late pregnancy. What are the symptoms of this disease of new of cerebral palsy? It is symptoms vary. If the injury if the injury is mild, a person is surely going to show mild symptoms. If the injury is severe, a person is surely going to show severe symptoms. It, this disease shows a wide range of symptoms from clumsy talk to inability to talk, from clumsy walk to inability to walk. Somebody's one hand is involved, somebody's two fingers, somebody's three fingers are involved, somebody's one hand and one arm is involved, somebody's both hands and both hands are involved, somebody's both hands, both the arms and one leg, somebody's both hands, both the arms, one leg and one foot. Somebody's both the feet, both the hands, both the arms, and both the legs are involved. That's why we say this disease shows a wide range of symptoms. Christy Brown was suffering from cerebral palsy, not from mild cerebral palsy. He was suffering from a severe cerebral palsy. Almost all his limbs were involved in this disease. He was physically crippled. How a person who is suffering from a severe cerebral palsy, whose hands are not working, whose legs are not working, his feet are not normal. How come that sort of, that kind of person write letter A? That is interesting. That's why Christy Brown writes an autobiographical sketch on this subject that when, why and how he wrote the letter A for the first time in his life. 
Ishti Brown Bignes, he says, he was, I was born on 5th June 1935 in Rotinda Hospital. On that, that day, 22 children were born. Out of those 22 children, 5 died during birth, 4 died during infancy. So, out of that figure, out of those 22 babies, 13 lived. Only 13 lived. My birth was a difficult birth. The condition of my mother had deteriorated. All our relatives, neighbors and friends had gathered in the hospital. They were waiting outside the operation theater. They were praying to God for the safety of my mother and for my safety. When I was born, my mother was sent to another hospital to recuperate because her condition had deteriorated. And I was not baptized for many days. You know, baptization is a Christian ritual. Christians take their babies to churches. They, their water is poured on to their heads or the babies are poured in water. The babies are immersed in water. They assume that after that ritual, the baby person becomes Christian. I was not baptized till my mother was well enough to take me to church herself. And it was my mother who first noticed that there was something wrong with me. My mother first noticed that my head had a habit of falling backwards. My mother tried to correct it by placing her hand behind my head. But as soon as my mother took her hands away, my head would fall backwards again. This was the first sign for my family, for my relatives, that I was not a normal child. As I grew older, I my mother noticed other defects in me. My mother noticed that my fingers were twisted most of the time. My arms were, my fingers were twitched most of the time. My arms were twined towards my back. I could not grasp the teeth of the milk bottle because my jaws would either lock tightly, so tightly that my mother couldn't open my jaws or my jaws would become so loose that it was impossible for me to grasp control the teeth of the bottle. Maybe this baby is a weak baby, but after a year, my condition was the same. I was not growing, I was not showing signs of growth. So my parents were very worried regarding all these things. Now they were fully convinced that there was something wrong with me, so they decided to seek medical advice. They decided to take me, they began to take me to clinics, to hospitals, to doctors, to specialists. And whoever saw me, all the doctors, specialists, labeled me a very, very interesting case. But all the doctors and specialists told my parents that this baby is uncurable. The mind of this baby is not formed. The mind of this, this baby is defective and it would remain so. But my mother would not believe them. My mother would not believe the inevitable truth as it seemed because everybody was telling my mother that this baby is uncurable, its, it's mind is defective and it will remain so. My mother refused to accept that truth. My mother was fully convinced. She was sure that my baby is curable. It is the body, it is the physical body of my baby that is shattered, that is crippled. But his mind is not. When my mother noticed that the doctors were of no help to her, because the doctors just told her that this baby is uncurable, this baby cannot be treated. My mother decided then that she would treat me herself. My mother decided that she would 
cure me herself. But it was not an easy task. It was a difficult task. Because now our friends, our relatives, our neighbors were also convinced. They also agreed with the doctors. They told my mother, okay, this is your baby, you treat this baby with sympathy, with love, but don't take this baby seriously. Because it, this baby would only break your heart in the end. No matter, no matter how much time you spend with this, this baby, whatever you do with this baby, this baby is not going to be cured. But my parents stood against the relatives, against the neighbors, against all the doctors. My mother was determined to treat me, to show the world that that my baby was not an idiot. My baby was not an imbecile. At that time, I was the sixth issue of my parents. I had three brothers, namely Jim, Tony and Paddy. And I had two sisters, namely Lily and Mona. All of them were young. They were just like, still, they were just like steps of a staircase. Because each of, each of the successive siblings had the same ga gap between them, a gap of a year or so. Five, four years passed, that means I was five years old, but still I did not show any signs of growth, any signs of intelligence. My father was laying bricks to earn money for the family, while as my mother was at home, she spent most of her time with me. She tried to penetrate the curtains which seemed to hung over my mind. She spent most of her spare time with me. She was trying to cure me. She was playing with me, singing with me. She wanted me to respond to external stimuli, which I was not. I was not showing any signs of growth, any signs of intelligence. But I was not inert. I was not motionless. My body showed some motions, but those motions were sitting, wild, snack-wise, snack-like. My fingers twisted and twisted continuously, continually. My arms were twirling towards my back, and my arms were suddenly shoot off this way or that way. I had no control over those movements. My head lurched sideways. My head had a habit of falling sideways. I was a strange person. I was a strange child. I was an abnormal child. My mother tells me that. My mother tells me, she often tells me different stories and how much time she had spent with me. Especially my mother remembers one day when she had spent a lot of time with me. When she was determined to make me respond. She had shown me pictures of animals, flowers, trees, birds. She, was, she wanted me to repeat the names of those animals, those trees, those birds. But I couldn't. She was determined that she would make me repeat those names. But I, I couldn't. She tried very hard. I couldn't. Then my mother was extremely exhausted. She had come close to my ear and told me, Christy, please, if you are not able to speak, you at least nod your head. If you liked these pictures, those birds, those animals, those flowers or not. But I couldn't. On the contrary, what I did, my hands reached up and I grasped her hair. Gently she loosened my hands, she loosened her hair and she had run away from that room, weeping. At that time, she seemed to have lost her hope in me. At that time, she was really, really depressed. She had lost almost all courage in me. And when the relatives, friends, they began to talk about institutions, you know, there are different institutions for uh, for different kinds of people, for example, for blind, 
there are different kinds of institutions for deaf there are different kinds of institu institutions similarly my par my relatives my nearest and dearest they began to think on the similar line they told my parents that this baby you should send this baby you should send this baby to an institution but my mother did not agree with them she sort of called with all of them she told them never i'll never let my baby go there i know i'm still sure that my baby's mind is not abnormal it is his physical body that is abnormal not his mind he is physically crippled not mentally but in a, in a heart of hearts in a heart of hearts she was very worried she was very worried but because she did not have a single evidence to prove that her baby's mind was not defective in a heart of hearts she prayed to god god you give me at least a scrap of evidence so that i can prove myself so that i can prove my point of view that my baby is not an idiot i was 5 years old but still i was not showing any signs of intelligence i was not showing any signs of growth i was nothing but a bundle of crooked muscles and nerves my mother was extremely exhausted my father my parents were extremely exhausted then it happened suddenly then i began showing signs of intelligence growth suddenly and so quickly that i still remember that scene i feel it is an incident that has taken place yesterday I remember it was a grey December day. It was a foggy day. It was a cold December day. It was snowing outside. Everything was covered with snow. The streets, the trees, the branches of trees, and snow flakes were falling. And some of the snow flakes were striking with the window panes and melting. I can remember that scene. I can remember those minor details. I was sitting in a room. All of almost all the family members were sitting inside a room. in the middle of the room was a hearth the room was lit up by that hearth in a corner mona and paddy were sitting side by side next to each other they had a school primer some school primer some school books before them and they were writing with a piece of bright yellow color chalk on a slate I remember it was the chalk that that attracted me the most. I remember all these minute details. Suddenly, an impulse originated in my heart. I wanted to do what my sister was doing. I reached towards my sister. I snatched the piece of. bright colored yellow chalk from my sister's hands impolitely i don't know why i used my left foot but i used the practice that i used my left foot i snatched the piece of chalk from my sister's hands and i wanted to do what my sister was doing my sister was writing something on a board i also wanted to write i made a wild sort of scribble a wild sort of line on the slate and all the family members my brother and sister and father they were frozen they were immobile they were surprised they were stunned they were looking towards me i looked towards them they were looking towards me because it was not less than a miracle my mother came from the pantry she followed other family members that means other family members were looking towards me my mother also looked towards me she crossed towards me she was going to other room but she came towards me she sat beside me 
as she had done many a times, hundreds of times, and she told me, Christy, I will show you what to do with it. Christy, I will show you. My mother took another piece of chalk. She wrote letter A. She wrote letter A on the floor and told me, Christy, copy it. Christy, copy this. I tried. I made a wild sort of line, but I, my body stiffened. I was exhausted. I wanted to throw the chalk away. I didn't know how the chalk had come in my toes, what I was doing, how I was doing. My mother, she stood behind me. She patted my head, my shoulders. She told me, Christy, you try again. There was sitting in the room. Everyone was looking towards me. They were immobile. They were frozen. They were waiting for a miracle in the midst. I tried again. I made a wild stab with the chalk and produced a crooked line and nothing more. I tried, I produced a crooked line. Crooked line means I made a line, I drew a line, but there was not a straight line, there was a crooked line. My mother whispered me, Christy, you try again. I did. I stiffened my body. I tried a third time. I drew one side of the letter. I drew half the other. I drew one side of the letter. I tried again. I drew half the other side. Half the other side. I was tired. I was confused. But I drew it. I drew the letter A. Because before it was on the slate, before every family member, it was a letter A. It was wobbly, it was shaky, it was not looking nice. It had an uneven center line. The center line was not even, but whatever it was, it was letter A. I had done it. I proved my mother's point. I proved that I was not mentally defective. I proved my mother's point that my that I was physically crippled, but I was not mentally crippled. My father hoisted me on his shoulders. Tears streamed down from my mother's eyes. It was an emotional movement from my, from my mother because all her hard work, all her sympathy, her love was finally rewarded. I had done it. I had begun to express myself. No doubt, I couldn't speak. I was not speaking. I could never speak in my life, but I had begun to express myself. I would express myself through writing. I would write. 